Hey guys, welcome to Dream Framer Photography. Today's lesson is called Working with Layers in Photoshop Part 1 and is dedicated to beginners. There is a lot of YouTube tutorials on this subject, however, they are not really easy to follow, especially if you are just a beginner. So I decided to make at least a couple of videos about layers and go slow with it so you have time to practice between the videos. If you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe so you can be informed about the future videos because as I mentioned, this is only part one, so we're just gonna be scratching the surface now. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about more complex stuff. Now it's a good moment to remind you that I'm gonna be holding free live webinars on photo editing here on YouTube. And to be informed about the date and the time of the next webinar, go to my website, dreamframer.photography news. Now let's get to our photo example. Okay, let's go and open our example image. I'm just gonna open a regular JPEG photo. And as soon as I do that, you can see that Photoshop placed the image in this so-called background layer. The panel where the background layer is placed is called a layers panel and I can grab it and move it around. But I'm just gonna put it back in this corner because that's where I usually keep it. If you don't see this panel, just go to window and click on layers. Right now you see this check mark here, which means that our panel is visible on the screen. Now let's talk a little bit about this background layer and what these little things mean. On the left you see the eyeball icon and that means that the layer is actually visible. If I try to click on that and switch off the visibility, nothing's gonna happen and that's because we have this little padlock icon here. This icon means that something on the layer is locked. So let me first click on that to unlock the layer. Now when the layer is unlocked, I can actually click here and switch off the visibility for this layer. This gray and white checkerboard background means that these pixels are transparent. Photoshop will also not let you edit anything if the layer visibility is switched off. So let me click here and turn the visibility on again. Now remember that little padlock icon that we had here that was telling us that something was locked on the layer? Well, there are different things that can be locked on the layer. These little icons represent those things. For example, the last icon says lock all. If I click on that, everything on the layer will be locked. I can try to grab a brush and let's say black color, but if I try to paint over this layer, Photoshop will tell me could not use the brush tool because the layer is locked. Also, if I grab uh, the move tool and try to move the layer, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna get the same kind of warning. So let me click now and unlock everything and show you how to lock certain features. For example, this little icon here says lock image pixels. If I click on that, I'm gonna lock the pixels on this layer. So I will not be able to edit the image just like before. I will not be able to use any of these tools to change the look of the layer, right? Any of these tools. However, I can actually click on the move tool and move the layer, okay? So let me go and undo that. Now let's see what this third icon means. Obviously it looks like a move tool, right? So if I click on that, I will not be able to move the layer. I can try, but Photoshop will give me the same kind of warning like before. You can also combine two or more types of lock. For example, I can have these two clicked and lock image pixels and move tool as well. Now let's see what this first icon means. The first icon looks like that transparent background that we've seen before, like a checkerboard, right? So if I click on that, I'm gonna lock only transparent pixels on the layer. Our layer currently doesn't have any transparent pixels. So let me grab the eraser tool and erase one part of the image. Now we have this corner of the image that is completely transparent. We have the edge and we have the rest of the image. The edge is soft just because I set up the eraser tool to have soft edges. 
Whenever you click on any tool, you will be able to access the options for that tool up here. So let me now increase the hardiness for eraser tool and you can see that the edges are actually sharp. So now we have transparent and non-transparent part of this layer. Let me click and lock transparent pixels for this layer. I'm gonna grab my brush tool and black color and try to paint over our layer. As you can see here it works, but it doesn't work over the transparent area. This is very convenient if, for example, you have a cutout object on the layer and you want to turn it into a silhouette. It's not the best way to do it because you're basically destroying that layer, but it is a way to do it. Now let me go and undo that, but I have to undo more than one step, so I can't use just regular undo, I have to use step backward. The shortcut for step backward is alt Control z on the PC or command option z on Mac. That way you can go more than one step back and come to the point where you can continue editing your image. I'm not going to talk about the fourth icon in the lock menu because that one is important only if you work with uh, two or more artboards, which is very unlikely if you're just editing photos. Let's move on. We learned how to turn on and off the visibility for the layer and also how to lock the layer. At this point I want to tell you that not just these lock icons are relevant to our selected layer. All the little icons and everything on the top of this layer's panel is actually related to the selected layer. And you know that the layer is selected because the thumbnail of the layer has white corners and also the background behind the name of the layer is lighter gray than the rest of the panel. Now let's have a sneak peek into the purpose of layers in Photoshop. Layers are very complex and there is no way you can learn everything from one tutorial. You can try to find a better video that will show you everything but you will most likely fall in the same trap most people fall and you will give up. So please give yourself time and practice and also subscribe to be informed about the future videos because that's when we're gonna continue the story about layers. Now I'm gonna show you just the basic stuff and then I'm gonna give you something to practice until the next video, okay? Let me duplicate this layer. There is more than one way to do this, but I'm just gonna grab it with my mouse and drag it down to a new layer icon. Now we have two exactly the same layers and both are locked, okay? So let me unlock the top layer and also let me turn off the visibility for it. Whenever you work with layers, you have to imagine that you're looking from above and these layers are basically like two photographs one over another. Whatever you see on the main screen as your image that you're editing is either the topmost visible layer in the stack or the combination or blending between two or more layers in the stack, okay? Now, I clicked on the top layer and you can see that the top layer is selected because of these white corners and light gray background. If I click on the bottom layer, then I'm gonna select the bottom layer. However, that doesn't mean that now we see the bottom layer. We still see the top layer because of that eyeball icon on the left side of the top layer. That's why you have to be careful when you're editing your image, you have to know what layer is selected. For example, if I select the bottom layer and let's say I want to edit it, let me first unlock it so I can actually do anything with it. Uh, I'm gonna grab my brush tool and uh, let's say black color and I'm gonna paint over our image. You can see that nothing is happening. However, that's not true. Something is happening, but we can't see it because the top layer is still visible. If I turn off the visibility for the top layer, you can see that we actually edited the bottom layer. So be careful about this. You don't want to end up ruining your photo because you edited something you didn't want to and you didn't see it at that moment. Let me turn on the visibility for the top layer. So now let me go and undo what we did. Okay, 
So again, make sure that you selected the layer you actually want to edit and not some other layer, okay? That's one thing that you have to pay attention to. Now, why do we have layers if we see only the top layer? Well, that's where the real story about layers actually starts. We can see the layers below the top layer and there are many ways to do it. Let me show you one way of doing it. The top layer is now selected and I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments and let's say I want to make the top layer black and white. So I'm clicking here, black and white, and I'm just going to click OK. This is not the best way of doing it, OK? This is just for this tutorial. So now we have the top layer, it's black and white, it's selected and fully visible. Now remember how I told you that all these icons and everything on the top of the layers panel is related to the selected layer. So if I go now to this opacity here and I click on it and I pull this slider to the left, I will actually decrease the opacity for the top layer. So now we are getting some color back because we are looking through our top layer that is semi-transparent now and we see some of the colors from the bottom layer. This is basically the simplest way of combining two layers to get the result that cannot be achieved with only one of them. Now, what if uh, we don't want the transparency to be uniform? Let's say we want to make certain parts of the layer less transparent than other parts, or maybe we want to hide completely certain parts of the layer. We can achieve that using layer masks. Layer masks are very powerful and they can really unlock your creativity. Let me show you how to use them. The top layer is now selected and I'm gonna go down and click this button. This button will add a layer mask to our selected layer. The layer mask is represented with this white rectangle with uh, white corners and White corners mean that now the mask is selected. We are now back to that important detail of what is selected. Now when the mask is selected, as you can see here, you will be editing the mask. If you try to paint something over your main image, you will be actually changing the mask and not the layer itself, okay? So let me show you how you can use the mask to hide certain parts of the top layer and show those parts from the bottom layer. For that, I'm gonna use paintbrush and black color. Whenever you work with masks, you're gonna be using black color. Let's put hardiness to 100% and I'm gonna increase the size of the brush a little bit. And now when the mask is selected, I'm gonna go to our main image and start painting over the main image. And look what's going on. It looks like we are making a hole in the top layer and through that hole we can see the bottom layer. That's actually not the hole, it's just the part of the mask that we painted black to hide the top layer and through that hidden part of the top layer we see the bottom layer. Now let's say we are not happy with the result. How can we fix it? Easy. You just grab white color instead of black color and paint over the mask again. Let me show you. I'm gonna grab our brush again, paintbrush, and instead of black color, I'm gonna click here and choose white color. Okay. Now, as you can see, white color is selected and I'm just gonna go back and paint over the mask again. And we are recovering the information from the top layer. The information was actually never destroyed, it was just hidden behind the mask. So again, I remind you, pay attention what's selected. Right now the mask is selected. What if uh, you click on the thumbnail and you select the actual layer? If you start painting now with a brush, you're not gonna be editing the mask. You're gonna be editing the layer. Let me show you. The layer is selected and you see what's going on? I'm painting over the layer, but we still see some parts of the bottom layer and that's because we have this little black spot on the mask so we see the bottom layer through that okay let me go and undo that now i'm gonna select the mask again 
and I'm gonna use a softer brush. So let me click up here and decrease the hardiness of the brush to zero. So the edges of the brush are soft and now while the mask is still selected I'm gonna grab black color and paint over the same area again. Now you see nice soft uh, transition between black and white and color, right? You've seen me selecting black or white manually but you can always click this button and foreground and background color will always turn into white and black. That's default. Now since the foreground color is white, let me go back and paint over the mask again to actually delete it practically. You can always click this button to switch between foreground and background color, okay? Now let's make a large brush and let's just click once in the middle of the image. You can see if you take a look at our mask thumbnail that we created a black spot in the center of it with soft edges and that's where we hid the parts of the top layer and through that let's say hole we can see the bottom layer that's why we see the color in the center of the image right here and the rest of the image is still black and white because those parts are shown from the top layer that's white on the mask now you can also delete the mask if you need to uh, you probably won't be doing this often because you can always make the mask clear and maybe you want to edit it later but if you want to delete it you can just grab it and pull it down to the trash can just like this when you do that Photoshop will ask you if you want to apply the mask before removing if you click apply then look at the thumbnail of the top layer look what's going on here I click apply and then you see the actual hole in the top layer the mask is gone but we have this hole in the top layer which means the mask was applied and deleted and through this hole now actual hole we see the bottom layer okay but that means that we basically destroy the information on the top layer so this is not a preferable way to do it if I turn off the visibility for the bottom layer you see the hole in the center Okay, and the rest of the image is more opaque, less transparent. Let me switch on the visibility for the bottom layer again. And let me go and undo that. Now let's delete the mask without applying it. So I click again on the mask and drag it down to the trash can. And here I click just delete without applying. Then you can see that our top layer is the same as before not affected at all but we got rid of the mask so this was just the basic basic stuff that you can do with the layers and masks and uh, I advise you to go ahead and practice a little bit um, because if I start telling you about other things like blending modes and adjustment layers and clipping masks that's gonna be too much information you're gonna get lost so I think the best thing you can do now is uh, to get comfortable with what we learned so far so make a couple of layers apply some adjustment to the top layer and then add a layer mask and play with it paint over it with uh, black and white and see what you can do let me delete the top layer and uh, let's do another example quickly so now I'm gonna duplicate the layer again and then I'm gonna double click on the name of the layer and I didn't show you this before so you can double click the name of the layer and rename it to let's say layer 1 and uh, then I'm gonna go up here to the main menu and click image and while the top layer is active I'm gonna go to adjustments and let's say brightness and contrast so now I'm gonna decrease the brightness to make the layer darker click OK and then I want to add a layer mask to cover some parts of this top layer okay so I'm clicking on the layer mask icon and while the mask is selected I'm gonna grab black color and increase the size of the brush you see two circles because my graphic card is doing something weird 
in your Photoshop, you should be just seeing normal circle, one circle, I mean. So the brush that we chose has soft edges and I'm just gonna go ahead and click here in the center of the image. And as you can see, we applied this black spot in the center of the mask and that black spot is hiding the center of the top layer and through that we can see the bottom layer. Let me now delete the mask and um, let me also delete the top layer. So I'm gonna make a copy, a new copy of this layer and go and make a different adjustment. Let's say uh, hue saturation. So now let's change the hue of the top layer. Maybe something like this. And now let's uh, decrease the opacity of this top layer and see what kind of effect we are getting. Let's add a mask. And while the mask is selected and the brush is selected as well, I'm going to decrease the size of the brush and paint over some parts of this top layer to uncover the bottom layer in those parts. Just like this. Now we can, for example, switch uh, black and white uh, color, foreground and background color, and uh, correct this mask that we did. Let me just do that. So now we are using white paint, white color, and uh, I'm gonna decrease the size of the brush and then correct the mask that we created. I think it would be really good for you if you uh, practice a little bit to become completely comfortable with uh, these basic functions of uh, layers and masks before we move on to more complex stuff. Otherwise, you can just get lost and you can give up, as I mentioned. I also want to mention that subscription for Photoshop, Lightroom and a bunch of other apps that you see on the screen now costs only $9.99 per month. For this money, you are getting the most powerful photo editing software in the world. If you decide to pay for this subscription, I would be grateful if you use my affiliate link that you can find in the description of this video. That was it guys, the end of part 1, and now you have some time to practice and also if anything was unclear, please ask me. See you in the next video, bye.